Forgiveness is overrated. Forgiveness is what allows the person who assaulted you, they didn't sexually abuse you, they assaulted you. So change your language to assault, sexual assault. The person who assaulted you will likely assault someone else. And if you give them the forgiveness pass, as you will be told to do by family members, you will be told to do that by friends, you will be told by clergy, you will be told by everyone to move along now. Move along. Sorry you were raped. We don't want to hurt anybody's life. It's no big deal. This shit happens. Move along. You can't talk or it's going to come back on you. Forgiveness is overrated. It's an entire chapter of my book. And once we wrap up the workshop, it goes to podcasts. And I have exciting news. Oh, my God. But um, we'll get to that. Um, then we're going to talk about every other chapter and aspect of the book and forgiveness is overrated is very important um people they'll tell you first off forgive yourself and i'm that's where i come from as it my own program that i've developed as a neuro-linguistic practitioner and after 23 years of my own therapy with one counselor and also other therapists but I've done a whole lot of work and research and I, I focused on the trigger management. I have focused the whole spades program, um, S, the shame is not yours. We spend a lot of time and we did go back. That's all on the YouTube library, um, you know, full length videos, um, talking about how shame manifests and what happens with CPTSD survivors that, um, uh, creates and perpetuates that shame in every way in your life. And I don't have time to do all that right now, but please go review the S in spades. Um, it's all clearly divided on my YouTube channel, although I need to get the descriptions and that stuff added in. There are not enough hours in the day, I'm telling you. But um, you don't have to forgive yourself. <laughs> what did you do wrong? Telling you to forgive yourself, telling you that you can forgive yourself is like saying your part in this was wrong. And while on one level it was, it sure as hell wasn't your fault that it was wrong. So get over that right now. You do not need to forgive yourself. And when it comes to your perpetrator, your assailant, not your abuser, your assailant, if you were raped as a child... If you were touched in a way you did not consent to or understand because you're a child, back to the top. Okay, so where I'm going with all of this, besides we're going to talk all about how forgiveness is overrated, um, I've got to interject here or I'm going to freaking pop. Um, one of my heroes in this world emailed me yesterday or messaged me on Facebook emailed me or told me to email her <laughs> Joyce M Short who is the CEO and founder of CAN uh, which is the cons consent awareness network and a fellow survivor who has written four books on the subject and is a leading if not the leading authority in the world on consent and has literally de developed the definition to make a legislated, defined definition of what consent is. From state to state, you are going to be shocked when I tell you some stats. I have not sat and memorized, nor am I going to sit here and read a chart, but there are some states where there is absolutely no punishment for raping someone without their consent. Um, and what is considered consent to the judicial systems across the board is, um, although the actual laws vary from state to state, what is consent is saying, uh, no, no, stop, or fighting, 
Um, and the deal is, if you were groomed, if you have CPTSD, you were probably groomed. You don't know fighting is a thing. You don't understand anything. You're not developing like a normal child. You don't talk to people about this. You don't share. You don't cross-reference. You don't even understand that everybody's not doing this. And when you do, you come up with all kinds of mental tricks. Like I was saying yesterday, I tried to be in love with my assaulter for a while because he was just always there, you know? And it started out as he was the only person who paid attention to me. It was nice to me when I was a little kid. And it progressed to, you know, I, I don't think he's a serial predator except that he likes young girls and dated a lot of them after I got away. But um, the society that we're in and the language of it perpetuates uh, a moral base that accepts these things. And so when I talked to Joyce today, she gave me so much new perspective. Uh, just when I think I've read every book and thought about it all, uh, I love it when someone push something and I go, oh, I see it in a new way. I get it. Um, I understand. We need to focus on the fact that a five-year-old who's been groomed and raped, if she didn't fight, if, that's considered consensual. That's considered consensual. Um, in some states, you can rape if you pretend to be someone else. Like if you climb into bed with someone who is asleep and they think that you are their husband. There's actual cases of this. Um, and and um, Joyce... Short addresses that in the video that I posted on Facebook. Um, so I, you should definitely go, please go and listen to all of Joyce M. Short's uh, TED Talks and such and her read her books on the subject because I realized after talking to her today, she is dead on right. You know, what I'm doing is important too and it's all part of it, you know, being... A neurolinguistic practitioner and having my own CPTSD, my own seven years of grooming and assault to draw from, uh, my own 23 years of therapy and counseling and self-study and book study, getting where I am. Today, I feel validated. Thank you, Joyce, um, because I was made to realize that what I have to say, what happened to me, and the platform that I've built can be a catalyst in this world. I wanted it to be a catalyst. And I was, I've been reaching out, I've been forming the action teams to report to Thorn and telling everybody to go to talk to Rain when they can and asking people to start subscriptions with no, nobody does. None of you is starting five, five dollars a month and you control yourself. I don't understand. I need you five bucks a month. It's not even for me. I need you five bucks a month just to expand. Um, but anyway, I am super pleased to announce that when we go to podcast in a couple of weeks in a perfect world, uh, Joyce M. Stone, CEO and founder of CAN and the leading authority and the person responsible for us even talking about consent legislation much less she's you know having be have bills out there going and meeting with politicians um i just all praise thank you for reaching out to me i am thrilled to join sweet survivor with can and um again we will promote rain we will report to thorn if you don't want if you're afraid and you think somebody's being trafficked or what you formerly would have called sexually abused we're going to now call sexually assaulted, then the best thing you can do is get it into the hands of an organization like Thorn who have cyber capabilities that um, go beyond what just one local law enforcement agent can do. They coordinate local and regional and federal law enforcement with militaries across the world, internationally coordinating with militaries and private agencies. It's, they have found and busted, they have saved over 2,000 trafficked, sexually trafficked people and children, and they 
um, are the people we report to. So if you don't want to tell and you're afraid, um, I pack a handgun because I understand people want to kill me already. I'll be the one. Send it to my chat box. I'll get it to Thorn. And I need you to take seriously and start using the hashtags consent awareness and FGKIA. And F this is Joyce Short's description that has is going into law, is working into law um, of what consent should be legislated to be. It should be I just learned this today, so give me a minute. It should be um, freely given, knowledgeable, informed agreement. And a person being coerced, like by the Harvey Weinsteins of the world into losing their career, that is not consent. That's coercion. And children who are being groomed and don't fight back, that is not consent. That is what the F. I didn't know any better, and so neither do them. And people being trafficked um, who have, have been removed from their families and their lives and are dependent on their traffickers, these people are all considered as having given consent. Um, people who deceive, who say that they're somebody else. Who, uh, there are c cases where they're like, uh, in fact, Joyce Shorts, one of her... Uh, excess, I believe, said he had, he was this and he was that and he was the other and he wasn't any of those things. He was just doing that to get in her pants. So while she was agreeing at the time, when you find out someone is a total fraud and has just been telling you lies to turn you into their willing fuck partner, that's not okay. That is not consent. But the law does not have any hardly legislation and what is there is completely different state to state and absolutely not enough so uh sweet survivor we are super happy to help can and be part of can and the biggest news is that joyce stone agreed to be interviewed on my podcast and I am, Joy Stone has 47,000 followers and she's changing this world. And she's handing me an opportunity to grow and do that. And I cannot tell you how grateful I am. Hmm. So, this was just a, an extra, I like to talk to you guys on Friday. And I, I like to remind you on Friday night that um, you, it's a weekend and you're going to probably get drunk or do drugs maybe or or maybe not, maybe just be lonely and, um, you might have an ex pressuring you. Um, you might be in a new relationship and you don't feel ready for sex yet, but they want to, and you don't want to lose them. Um, you don't have to have sex tonight and you shouldn't, especially if you have anybody, but especially if you have CSA or CPTSD, but for every GD, I almost said, God damn, <laughs> human on the earth, you take your time. If someone can be lost because they can't wait for a sexual experience with you, if your company isn't enough to keep them coming back and deciding if and when you want that experience or if and when they want to walk, but... Um, if they're going to walk because you don't have sex, um, they're not your person anyway. And guess what? Many of the people that you like and care about, they're not going to walk. They'll stick with you. Wait two months. Wait six months. Wait until you're sure. And you've done your Google research, too. I'm serious. Google everybody. I even Googled my husband. Um, and he was a 30 year old friend. I mean, 30, 30, a friend of 30 years who I hadn't seen in 27, um, a coworker, actually. He was the sound man in my band. And, um, I was the one of, I was the singer and songwriter and, um, 
it's good to get to the point where you're happy, but I'm still going to go after my assailant. I am not an angry person, except when I should be, and then I'm angry as hell, and I don't want to lose that. That's why I'm all against antidepressants. I don't think we got to that yesterday. Um, the antidepressants, I should throw that in. Um, I am absolutely against antidepressant therapy. I'm more interested in microdosing, but that is not a, a researched enough or legal thing that I can recommend it to anybody. Um, but most uh, most of people are treated uh, with most people with CPTSD are treated like they have true depression or uh, some kind of a chemical imbalance. But we've learned on the neuro and chemical end of things that almost every kind of mental illness along those like anxiety, bipolar, borderline personality disorder, um, these things are related to your nurturing, not your genetics. Your brain grows. I'm a neurolinguistic practitioner, so I'm going to get geeky on you now. Your brain grows and forms differently than everybody else's based on your life experience. So what you are raised with, whether it's loud, whether it's violent abuse or sexual abuse or poverty or, you know, you could have wonderful parents who are in a war-torn country who just can't get out of a poverty loop. There are lots of ways to have CPTSD and there are all kinds of people that then develop OCD, ADHD, uh, dissociative patterns, um, bipolar. Bi uh, the latest research shows that all of that is pretty much a bunch of crock of shit that any of it is genetic, except in very rare cases. It is a product of your environment. And what people do not seem to understand, well, they don't understand, because you have to study it to learn this. But uh, I think you can intuit yourself as a layman that uh, having a state of tension in a home, having a state of fear in a home. You know, I personally know people that, lots of people that stayed for the kids and they, it didn't help the kids. Most of the kids are on antidepressants diagnosed with something. It's like... Being your authentic self is the only way that you can raise healthy children. And everybody's brain is different. And so that's why I got fascinated when I did trauma-focused cognitive behavioral therapy after 60,000 drugs. Okay, six, maybe. But you know what I mean. Um, I went through the march of antidepressants like everybody else when I first went, when I first realized I had been victimized, when I first realized I had CPTSD. I mean, I was three marriages in before I knew that. Two. Two marriages in before I knew that. And uh, my marriage counseling turned into sexual assault counseling. And I've learned and grown so much. But um, where I'm going with this is when I finally did trauma-focused cognitive behavioral therapy, it was immediate relief. It was immediate uh, this is why talk therapy does not work. For people with CPTSD, with rare exception, a person who likes talk therapy is a person who likes to whine over and over, who is so, I don't mean that in a bad way, I mean, but they're, they're so lost in their experience that they just keep repeating it. And that's because you're doing talk therapy. You're going from therapist to therapist. You're taking drug after drug. This didn't work. We'll try something else. Well, that didn't work. We'll add this in. We'll tweak it. We need a little more of this. You know, it's like, no, you need to, with your doctor, because I am not a physician. I am a neurolinguistic practitioner. You do not get off of a drug without talking to your doctor or you're trying to commit suicide. Don't do it. Back down. Talk to your doctor. Do your own research. And if you decide you want, don't back down on your drugs. I mean, make a plan with your actual physician if you want to try getting off of drugs and simultaneously do trauma-focused cognitive behavioral therapy, which costs nothing and you can do in, in your home. Here's my notebook. Um... This was my breakthrough. I was like, I felt guilty and shameful 
my whole life. And I just dissociated from sex. I didn't know I didn't experience intimacy. I was a performance artist. I talked all about that for the last several weeks and it's all in the library. But now I'm just going to say, yeah, I, so I started by, I don't know what to draw. My, it was homework, you know, and I gave it to you guys. So that's why I'm starting with me. Um, I drew a picture that it was, I liked him. He's my brother-in-law. He's way older than me. My sister's way older than me. Um, you know, I'm like 10. <laughs> and, you know, there were like signs, you know, before and after. Um, but I drew it, I put it on paper, and then I, I drew the next memory that naturally followed. And that's like grape juice and gin. And that's even in a song I wrote that's on my CD, A Bed for My Boots. Um, I might have attached it in the descriptions. I just started doing that, but I'm not sure if it's on any, everything. But please check out Linda K. Gifford dot um, dot com, and all uh, all money for that CD, which I just released this week, um, is and it's all original songs. Um, one of them was cut by Del McCurry, and we won the International Bluegrass Music Award Album of the Year. Um, and so, yeah, it's I like it. I hope you do too. Um, and the song Little Girl on it is depicting this. It says, grape juice and gin, kitty cocktails again. Watch the pretty little doll's head spin. And there's, when I drew this, I didn't think about it at the time, but my counselor pointed out I drew a much more adult face on this person. And this is my assailant, one of them. He probably is too. Um, because things happened when I was really wasted and little that I barely remember. Um, but I went on to draw what happened in the truck and all. And the thing is, I couldn't say these things. I couldn't say these things because it was so in my heart and so in my gut. I think I knocked my camera. That, um, it was so in my heart and gut that there was no way that I was going to say these things even to myself so hence the cptsd rabbit hole that we talked about in the p week please go review p start with us you need to start at the beginning but they're only a half an hour folks pretty quick i mean you can binge a little blue bloods quicker than you can long hey, just do it <laughs> go check out the p i really want you to hear that and i'll go back and repeat all of it in other live streams but um trying to stay focused on the forgiveness is overrated theme um unlike yesterday's don't trade your daughter for a cow theme which i'm going to talk more about next week also in the spirit week i'm going to talk about religion and not religion and i'm not judging but i'm going to tell you what you want to do with yours um if you got one and what spirit is if you don't and i'm not trying to make anybody I believe anything because that is none of my place. I don't even know what I believe. <laughs> you know, I just know decency, goodness, kindness, and love is, will get you far in this world. And the other things don't seem to be working very well. So then why don't I believe in forgiveness then, right? Well, because forgiveness is a construct. It's a construct created by a, a patriarchal society that wants you to forget about it and let boys be boys and let women be commoditized and go on with millions and millions of people across bunches and bunches of culture who absolutely accept that their vagina is uh, their father's to give away or sell or trade, whether for a cow or for a relationship with another family or a business partner or whatever. Yes, this has been the way of the world, but it does not have to be the way of the world going forward. I don't accept that. And I don't want you to accept that either. So we have to start, like Joyce Stone explained to me today and made me really see, I was just, it's the law. Because morality starts with the law. And she talked about, um, in, in her video that I posted, go watch that, she talks about how it was perfectly acceptable to rape slaves until it was illegal. And then the moral perception shifted. So please go to can. Um, it is 
it is the place to join in and insist. It'll give you a, a format, people to call, things to do, insist on legislation that defines consent laws uniformly across all 50 states. Because only when the punishment seems real do does the average person accept it as reality. So the morality shift will follow the legal shift. So I am adding in my all to the legal fight now, instead of just helping you with your, and my own, we're helping each other, I'll say, with our um, CPTSD um, and sharing our knowledge and helping those who need reprogrammed. I am very excited with my new neurolinguistic practitioner uh, status and knowledge and putting everything into helping one person or a group of people. And that's about to start too. So it's getting very exciting. If you'd like to join a Zoom group, please message me through any social, but not Facebook Messenger. I let go of lindagifford.com and changed it to lindakgifford.com to move my band site and my CD sale site over to Sweet to raise money for Sweet Survivor. And someone immediately pounced on lindagifford.com and turned it into, it's like a sex store. And they've got pictures of like a bunch of cute Asian girls all dressed in the same fluffy red outfit. And I am mortified. Uh, just this is one of those cartoon cussing moments. Let's just, right? Me, what I do, they took my name and put it on a sex store. So I've got people on it. Um, it's good to know people in the tech world and um, Thorne, that's what they do. So I'm hopeful that lindagifford.com won't be a sex ring for much longer. And I'm very, very sorry about that and disgusted, disgusted. So um, stop forgiving your assailants. Don't let anyone tell you not to talk. I get all leany in the camera, I'm sorry. A little monster, or a big monster. Um, do your own cognitive behavioral therapy. Don't talk it to death, draw it, write it. And then your brain will reinterpret it in a logical way that'll move it from the amygdala, which if you have CPTSD is obviously enlarged if you look at it on an MRI, okay? The neuroscience is there across the board. Enlarged amygdala, that's your fight or flight syndrome. That's why your memories are all, it's not that you don't remember. And this is where they trip us up in court. They're like, you don't even remember. You don't even know it's real. It's like, no, I totally remember. And it's totally real, but it's just all floating around in there and coming out and hurting me when I'm triggered. And what you have to do is move it into your hippocampus. And that's your logic and reason center, which again is markedly across the board with people with CPTSD of any kind shrunk. Enlarged amygdala, fight, fight or flight, shrunk logic and reason center. So you've developed different neural connectivity based on your environment. And that is not a death sentence. That is, it's great news. It's great news. Because brains can grow new neural connectivity. You can do that. And talking it to death and taking a bunch of pills that deaden your libido. And it might make you feel way better because you're not freaking out all the time. But are you living? Are you living? I want you to live. So I... Reprogramming sounds like all scary. And it could be, you know, in, in the Manchurian candidate's hands. <laughs> it could be very scary. You know... Brainwashing is also a practice of guiding someone through uh, their memories, their whatever, and helping them reprocess it. So you definitely want to be in the hands of somebody you trust. Um, but it's not hypnosis. It's just putting together the memories and the fragments and when you put it on paper or you write it, 
it's a different kind of function than thinking. And then the hippocampus can read it and go, oh, this makes sense. That was me. I'm a victim of childhood sexual assault and I'm a survivor. And this is how it fits into historical context and anthropological context and sociological context. Um, you know, you get a grip. I'm not saying you're ever not going to be triggered. There's no survivor graduation date. Um, but there's no anything graduation date. You could be born with diabetes. There's no diabetes graduation date too. It's type one. Everyone's got their thing. Everyone's got the cross to bear. And I talked about not comparing crosses and we're not going to go there right now, but please review that too on YouTube. Please review that too. Okay. I think I could probably stop there. You probably would like me to stop there, wouldn't you? Read about neurolinguistic programming. Um, the only arguments there I'll wrap with are doctors, uh, a, a lot of the current establishment doesn't like to acknowledge NLP to the point that, I mean, some praise, and there are some patriarchal holdouts and some money grubbing holdouts that would rather keep you on drugs and they'd rather keep you in constant therapy um, rather than have you just. Put it in your brain and forever after be able to handle it. Uh, it shocking results. Like with EMDR, um, I'm autistic. I am a high-functioning autistic. Uh, not bragging with Genius IQ. Test it all the time just to be sure because I'm getting older. But um, the... Um, what am I saying? I just like EMDR. I'm afraid my brain will explode <laughs> if I do it. I don't know this. I've tried, but the going back and forth with the eyes, but for people who do in it's set up as an eight session thing, usually like six to eight sessions, but people report feeling permanently better and even report years after when they keep, keep following up that they're fine after doing EMDR. Um, they have reprocessed. They still are triggered. They still have to cope. We still have to work together and have, but the worst part of their CPTSD experience, the going down the rabbit hole part, the I'm out of control part, the part that we do because it's better than thinking at the moment, it's way better to be crazy and lost in the jumble because the reason it's jumbled is because we dissociated in the first place. We didn't want to remember this shit. We had to be kids. We had to, grow up. We had to present. We had to do homework and play the flute and be on tumbling team and be a cheerleader. We had to do things. So you couldn't think about it. That is normal. That's how it works. So try some trauma focused cognitive behavioral therapy. Try writing or drawing your thoughts. And if you feel really, really heavy about that, like it might hurt you, then do it with somebody that you trust and love there who knows what you're doing and understand your experience. And for God's sake, don't think you have to forgive yourself. You didn't do anything wrong. And don't think you have to forgive your assailant. Don't give them a pass to go do this to someone else. And please consider taking legal action. It's becoming more and more readily available. But yes, we have a hurdle. And the hurdle is the consent law issue. You don't want to get in court and have it thrown out like it is all the time. So step one, consent awareness. Okay. Consent is freely giving knowledgeable, informed agreement, freely given knowledgeable, informed agreement. A child can't do that. A trafficked, Sex worker can't do that. A person being coerced who has to keep a roof over her family's head or wants to progress in her career can't do that. So we have to change the laws. We're going to do that thing. Sweet Survivor, part of Kean. Please go listen to every single thing Joyce M. Stone has to say. Um, and she will be appearing uh, as a guest maybe the first guest I'm hoping on my podcast in a few weeks. Uh, stay tuned.
My lipstick looks way brighter out here than it really is. TikTok's weird. I look way older than I do here, too, just warning you. <laughs>